A pleasant day to all of you. Today, I am going to discuss the module 1 of your subject, Income Taxation, which is the general principles and concepts of taxation. So, according to Adam Smith, the greater part of the necessary expense of any great or civilized state must be defrayed by taxes. So, ibig sabihin, it should be financed or funded by the taxes that are collected from the people of the country. Okay? So, the people, tayo yun, the citizens, or even non-citizens, we contribute part of our own private revenue in order to make up a public revenue to the sovereign. The sovereign here is the government or the state or the country where we belong. So in the Philippines, we have what we often describe as a self-assessment system of national income taxation. It is called self-assessment system because it means that the income taxpayers are responsible for maintaining the necessary records for which their taxable income can be determined. So as we see, tayo yung, yung mga taxpayers ang nagpa-file ng kanilang income tax return wherein computed na yung taxes na kanilang babayaran based on the books that are being kept by, for example, businesses or kapag naman compensation income ka, um, it will be based on your total compensation for the whole year. Okay? So, ikaw yung nag-a-assess nag, uh, nag ng sarili mo kung magkano yung dapat bayaran. Because kung ang mangyayari niyan ay eh, BIR ang mag a ng bawat taxes ng bawat tao, it will be costly on their part. Kaya nga ito, this is compulsory, pero self-assessment system ang ginagamit natin. So, corporations are also regarded as legal persons for tax purposes. They are treated as taxpayers separate and apart from their owners. Ang ibig sabihin, um, yung corporation meron siyang sariling tax bukod dun sa shareholders niya. So, it doesn't mean na bayad na yung corporation ng tax niya, eh, absuelto na yung kanyang mga owners. So, hindi. Magbabayad pa rin ng sariling tax yung owners niya. So, definitely, any tax collection system is bound to experience problems in the implementation of tax laws considering that it is dealing with millions of taxpayers. So, totoo yan. Um, even sa ibang bansa, nakakaranas pa rin ng ganyang problema kasi nga, hindi ganun kadaling maningil ng tax among its taxpayers. As, is, as it is in the Philippines, tax collection is still far from perfect. Kasi as we know, hindi naman lahat nagbabayad ng tamang tax, di ba? Okay? And there are also some problems when it comes to the implementation of the BIR rulings and also the tax laws that are being implemented here in the Philippines. So, continuous improvements are being made toward the attainment of the country's ever-increasing revenue um, generation goals. Kasi nga, di ba, kailangan makolekta ang mga nararapat na taxes or buwis dahil ito yung ginagamit para mapunan or ma-finance ang expenses, ang mga projects ng government. And as you can see, as a student of PUP, you're one of the beneficiary of these taxes that are being collected by the government because uh, your tuition fee, it is being paid by the taxes of the Filipino citizens. Diba? Kaya nga tinatawag kayo na scholar ng bayan. So, what are the objectives for this module? So, you are going to learn the general principles of taxation 
and also learn the BIR organization. You should be familiar what BIR organization is as future managers and businessmen, its powers and functions, understand tax remedies of government and taxpayers, and also understand penalties and additions to taxes. So, kailangan nyo itong pag-aralan. This is very essential for you because you, pag kayo uh, nasa field na, kaya ay graduate na kayo, you will be dealing with it. So, you should have an understanding of the tax laws that we have here in the Philippines. So, there are three inherent powers of the government or state. The first one is the power of taxation. What is the power of taxation? It is the inherent power of the state to exact an enforced contribution upon person, property, or rights for the purpose of generating revenues for the use and support of the government. So, napansin ninyo, ang tax ay ini-enforce hindi lang sa tao. Okay? Not only to persons. It is also imposed to properties and ano pa, and rights. Okay? In taxa taxation, there is generally no limit to the amount of tax that may be imposed. Yan, no limit. But syempre, it should be legal. It should be according to what the law says. Okay? So, the next one is the, so that is power of taxation, ha? So, the next one is the power of imminent domain. When we say power of imminent domain, it is the inherent power of the state to expropriate private property for public purpose in return for a just or reasonable compensation. Kung maaalala ninyo, nung nag taroon ng diversion dito sa Lopez, di ba? So, merong mga private properties na nadaanan nung uh, kali o nung, nung diversion road na gagawin. So, walang karapatan na hindi pwedeng magreklamo or hindi pwedeng tumanggi yung may-ari ng mga private property na yun. Kasi nga, kung talagang dadaanan ng kali yun, wala kang magagawa. Tapos, di ba nagkaroon pa ng road widening? So, ang daming mga tinapyas na mga buildings. Because that is one of the inherent power of the government or state, which is the eminent domain. Pero, syempre, kapag ka nagsagasaan, kunwari yung lupa mo, um, pinagawan ng, because of the diversion road, uh, there should be a just or reasonable compensation for it. Okay? So, dapat bayaran ka. Pero iba naman kasi yung road widening. Yung road widening naman kasi, marami kasi sa atin yung nakasakot na nung uh, ng bahay na pinatayo na hindi naman sakot talaga nung lupa or kasama pa dun sa part ng main road. Kaya talagang aalis yun. So, you don't have the right to refuse. <clears throat> the third one is the police power. So, what is police power? It refers to the inherent power of the state to promote the general welfare of the people by limiting or regulating the rights or properties of any person. Okay, so the power is relatively free from the constitutional limitations and is superior to an impairment clause provision on obligation of contract. So, ito, pag sinabi natin police power, ngayong pandemic, ito, isa to sa ini-implement, di ba? Katulad yan, kapag may curfew, so, pwede kang hulihin. <coughs> okay? Nililimit yung activity ng mga tao. Okay? Sino, so, sino ang nag implement noon? Yung mga police, yung mga sundalo, and even uh, barangay uh, officials. Okay, because the, the government or the state has police power para ma-regulate ang activity ng mga tao to maintain what? To maintain uh, peace and security. So, similarities among the inherent powers of the government. The first one is they all underlie and exist independently with the constitution. 
Ano ibig sabihin niyan? Kaya nga tinawag na inherent power because even if not expressly mentioned or even if it is not in the Constitution, uh, pwede itong i-impose. Okay? Because it rely and exist independently. Okay? So, pwede siyang implement pwede siyang mag-exist even if not really stipulated in our Constitution. Although the conditions for their exercise may be prescribed by the Constitution and by law. Okay, so, pwede rin naman na yung kanilang mga condition at yung pag implement sa kanila ay pwede i-prescribe ng Constitution. Yan. Number two, they are, they are ways or means by the government interferes with public, priv with, sorry, with private rights and properties. Ayan. So, di ba? So, it, pare-pareho sila mag interfere ang government sa public rights and properties mo. And also, they all rest upon necessity. Ayan. Necessity. Because there can be no effective government without them. That is true. Kapag walang taxation, paano makakakilos ang gobyerno? Pag walang tax na nakokalip. Okay? Tapos kapag walang imminent domain, paano sila makakapagpatayo ng mga infrastructure? Diba? And mahalaga din ang police power kasi kung wala, there will be no peace and security sa bansa natin. Okay, number four. They all presupposes an equivalent compensation received directly or indirectly by the persons affected by the exercise of any of these governmental powers. So, yan. Meron daw na tatanggap na equivalent compensation. Pero sa taxation, hindi. Kasi, di ba, we, the citizens or the people, are the one giving out our personal funds or resources to the government. Okay? The, the fifth one is they are legislative in nature. Yan. Legislative in nature and the character, and character although, oh, sorry, Legislative in nature and character, although the actual exercise of the powers is delegated to the executive branch, local or national. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan uh, mai sabatas din itong mga ito. And even tax, hindi, hindi naman yun basta ide-declara na lang ng presidente na dapat singilin yung ganitong klase na tax. Da dapat dumaan siya sa legislative uh, or sa legislation, ibig sabihin, kailangan isapatas mo na siya bago siya maing. So, distinctions between power of taxation and power of imminent domain. So, pag sinabi natin power of taxation, it's directed against person, properties, or rights. Pag power of imminent domain, directed lang siya sa real property. When we say real property, ito yung mga unmovable properties like um, land and building. Pero pag power of taxation, mas malawak siya. Persons, properties, or rights siya ini-implement. The second one is the purpose of taxation is to raise revenue to support the government. While eminent domain is to have the real property for public purpose. Okay? So, ang taxation para magkaroon ng revenue ang gobyerno, pag eminent domain naman, para magkaroon naman ng real property na gagamitin for public purpose. The third one, in taxation, the taxpayer gives money. Ano? We are the one giving money. Representing his taxes. In consideration for the services and protections presumed furnished by the government. Whereas, sa imminent domain, the taxpayer gives away his real property. Okay? Pero, syempre, there is a just or reasonable monetary consideration. Okay? So, ang binibigay niya ay real property niya. The next one, the power of taxation is geared to raise revenues to support the government. Ito naman, distinction ito between the power of taxation and police power. Okay? So, pag police power naman, it is to regulate or limit the rights of person for the public welfare. 
Kaya nga, di ba, kaya na regular or limits yung right of person kasi nga, di ba, huhulihin ka kapag ka, hindi ka sumunod. Another one, the power of taxation is directed against persons. Yan, property or rights. So, pag naman police power, directed lang siya against the taxpayer's rights or property. The next one, the power of taxation. In the power of taxation, the amount of tax imposed may be unlimited. Ayan. May be unlimited, whereas in the police power, the amount of regulation fee must be limited. Okay? Pag yung mga penalty, di ba? Um, ganun lang yung amount. Hindi dapat mag-excess doon. So, limitations on the power of taxation. So, what are the limitations? The first one is the constitutional limitation. It refers to those limitations which are specifically cited or written in the provision of the Philippine Constitution. So, kapag ka, pwede siyang maging constitutional limitations pag talaga na, uh, specifically cited or stipulated doon sa Philippine Constitution natin. To wit, due process of the law. So, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process. So, before a taxpayer is made to answer for criminal offense, bago siya kasuhan ng criminal offense, there should be a due process of law. Okay? The next one is equal protection of the law. So, no person shall be denied the equal protection of law. The term equal protection of law means that the law means a law that prevents any taxpayer or person or class from being singled out as a special subject as hostile or discriminating tax legislation. So, ibig sabihin, bawat taxpayer ay dapat mag-enjoy ng protection against illegal or unreasonable tax assessments. <clears throat> Kasi nga, posibleng magkaroon ng ganito. <clears throat> Letter C, no imprisonment for non payment of debt or all tax. Sabi dito, wala daw tao na pwedeng makulong or ma-imprison for failure to pay debt or utang unless guilty of estafa wherein there is fraud or deceit. So, sabi nga, wala daw nakukulong sa utang. Maliban na lang kung nagkaroon ng fraud or deceit or nagkaroon ka ng kunwari nag-issue ka ng check eh, tapos hindi mo binayaran Mga ganyan. Pero sabi nga, kapag wala ka na talagang ipang babayad, hindi ka naman pwedeng ipakulong nung pinagkakautangan mo. Likewise, no one shall be sent to jail for failure to pay a poll tax. Meron sa poll tax, ang poll tax kasi ito yung ano, sedula. So, pag hindi ka naman nakabayad nun, hindi ka naman makulong. Ha? Next, non-impairment of the provision and obligations of contract. So, no tax law impairing the obligation of contract shall be passed. Any tax law that in introduces changes into the express term of a contract or its legal construction or its validity or its discharge or the remedy for its enforcement impairs the contract. Okay. Letter E, the rule of taxation shall be uniform and equitable. Okay, Congress shall evolve a progressive system of taxation. So, so dapat dito, sabi dyan uniformity. As reference to taxi, taxing at the same rate people or things belonging to the same class. So, hindi pwedeng namimili, hindi pwedeng dito sa ganito iba. So, dapat uniform. Okay? Thus, avoiding class tax legislation. When we say tax is equitable, it is based on the ability to pay and reasonable in amount taking into account certain factors. A tax that is confiscatory is certainly not equitable. So, sabi natin dito, dapat may ability to pay yung sisingili na taxpayer. At huwag dapat mas mataas pa sa kanyang ability yung sisingilin sa kanya na tax. No public money or property shall be appropriated for a religious or public purpose. Yan. No public money or property. So, the Constitution prohibits the appropriation, application, or payment of public money directly or indirectly for the use or benefit or support of any sect, church, denomination, sectarian institution. So, 
ang sinasabi dito, yung public money, hindi dapat i-donate sa mga ganito. Bakit? Ano ba ang purpose ng public money? Ang sinabi natin public money, these are the funds that are generated from the taxes that are being paid by the people. So, sino ang dapat makinabang nun? It should be, it should be the public also. Okay? Not a specific uh, religious organization or teacher, religious teacher or dignitary, except that when such per person is assigned to the armed forces of the Philippines or to any penal institution or government orphanage or leprosarium. Pag sinabi natin leprosarium, ito yung place wherein kinocontain yung mga tao na may leprosy. Okay? Next, letter G. Exemption from taxation of educational, religious, and charitable organizations. So, sabi nga dito, exempted daw ang educational, religious, and charitable organization mula sa tax. Because they are organized uh, not for profit. Okay? Example niyan, yung mga churches, uh, parsonages, convents, yan, mosques, not profit cemeteries. Okay, so yun yung mga example niyan. So, from religious, educational, and charitable purpose, okay, shall be exempt from taxation. And then, letter H, no law granting any tax exemption. Shall be passed without what? Without the concurrence of majority of all the members of the Congress. So, dapat pag nagkaroon ng na tax exemption, it should be passed by the majority of the members of the Congress. Like, sabi ko nga, ang taxation ay dumadaan sa legislation. Letter I, an imprisonment on the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court on tax cases. The Supreme Court is empowered to review, revise, modify, or affirm an appeal to certiorari as the law or rules of the court may provide. Okay, so hindi pa naman yun final. Kasi nga, minsan, nagkakaroon pa rin ng appeal. Ano? Next, letter J. The Philippine President has the power to approve or veto a tax bill approved and passed by the Philippine Congress. Okay, tama yan. Katulad ng ginawa niya sa train law. Ano? May, may kapangyarihan ng presidente na i-approve or i-veto ang tax bill. Pero dapat na-approve at napasa siya sa Philippine Congress. So, it, every bill passed by the Congress shall, before it becomes a law, be presented to the Philippine President. So, lahat ng pumasa, ipipresent muna sa presidente and then the president shall have the power to approve or to veto in full or particular item of in the said tax bill. So, Congress may be may by law authorize the President to fix within the specified limits. Ibig sabihin, pagka may nakita yung Presidente na kailangan pang baguhin, so dapat nilang i-fix pa yun. Okay. In effect, the power of taxation is shared by ano, legislative and executive branches of the government. When we say legislative, it is the what? It is the Congress. When we say executive branch, oh, ito yun. Pag sinabi natin executive, ito yung office of the president. Inherent limitations. So, it refers to those limitations which are not and need not be specified or cited in the Philippine Constitution. The first one, taxes may be levied only for public purpose. So, that is the limitation. So, hindi pwedeng humingi ng tax for the benefit of a certain person or a certain organization. It should be for public purpose. Letter B, non-delegation of the power to tax except to local government. Because the power of taxation only belongs to the sovereign or the state. And then, exemption of taxation of the government entity. Sabi nga, the government cannot tax itself. Okay? So, pag government entity yan, exempted na yan sa tax. Letter D, tax laws must be within the state's territorial jurisdiction. Tama yan. Because you cannot impose taxes dun sa territory wherein you don't have the jurisdiction. So, it should be within your jurisdiction. 
And the letter E, tax law, must be subject to international committee conventions or agreements. Pag sinabi natin international committee, ito yung agreement among country wherein sasabihin kunwari ng Japan. O pagka may ganitong transaction at Filipino ay nandito sa Japan, hindi na namin yun hihinga ng tax. Pero pagka meron ding Japanese na nandyan sa bansa ninyo, dapat ganun din. Hindi nyo rin sila hihinga ng tax. Yun yung tinatawag na international committee. And then, prohibition of double taxation. Siyempre nga naman, it, it will be so burdensome for the taxpayer if magkakaroon siya ng double taxation. So, definitions of taxation. The first definition is that it is an inherent power of the state. Okay? So, na-mention na natin kanina yan. That is the inherent power of the state. The second one, it is a way or means of apportioning the operational cost of the government and all its public needs among those who in some measures are privileged to enjoy its benefits and therefore must bear a burden. Sabi nga, di ba? Um, kaya hinihinga ng tax ang bawat isa because you are enjoying some privilege or benefits. Like, you live in the Philippines, nagtayo ka ng negosyo, or hindi ka man nagtayo ng negosyo, nagkaroon ka ng trabaho, and in return, you are generating income. Diba? So, that is the benefit. So, therefore, if you are enjoying a benefit, you should also bear a burden. Okay? So, that's why it is a way or means para ma-apportion naman ng gobyerno yung kanyang operational cost. Another one, it refers to the act of levying a tax or the process by which the government, through its law-making bodies, raises revenue to defray its necessary expenses. So, this is the way where the government raises revenue. Kasi wala naman siyang ibang paraan para... Ah, walang ibang ma-effective na paraan para siya ay maka kalap ng pera or revenue para matustusan ang expenses. Nature of taxation, first one is authority. The power of taxation rests upon the necessity and is inherent to every government or sovereignty. So, ibig sabihin, the government has the authority to induce or to impose taxes among its people. Okay. So, the power of taxation is based upon the theory that government cannot exist without taxation. Thus, taxation is an important necessity. The next one is basis. basis. The theory is that taxes are imposed upon persons, properties, or rights for the support of the government in return for the general advantages and protections which the government affords the taxpayer, their properties and rights. So, sabi nga, where there is no benefit, there is no power to tax. So, ang basis daw dyan, kaya merong taxation kasi nga, tayo daw ay, ano, may nakukuhang advantages from our government. Okay? We are being protected. And we are given a certain privilege uh, wherein we enjoy some benefits. That's why may itong tayong tax. Okay? The basis of power to tax, therefore, is the reciprocal duties. Okay? Diba? Reciprocal duties. Ang duty ng gobyerno ay tayo ay protektahan, suportahan. Okay? That we live peacefully sa isang bansa. And also to... Uh, provide uh, the needs of those that are needy. Ano naman ang ating duty as a citizen? That is to pay our tax para magkaroon ng enough fund yung gobyerno sa paggawa ng kanyang duties. Purposes of taxation. What is the primary purpose? The primary purpose of taxation is what? To raise revenue for the use of what? of for public use, di ba? For public purpose. 
to raise revenue. Sabi niyan, tax revenue are the main source of yearly national budget. Diyan ang gagaling yung budget na ina-allocate ng gobyerno sa bawat government agencies and instrumentality. Okay. And then, second purpose is that <clears throat> to content or promote the general welfare, social and economic development of a country and its people. So, ang purpose niyan para kaya nagre-raise ng revenue, kumuha ng tax, ay paano mayroong pang suporta dun sa function ng gobyerno, which is to protect the local industries against foreign competitor. Okay, scope of taxation, the scope or coverage of the power of taxation is what? Ito, plenary or unlimited. Comprehensive and supreme. And restricted only by the constitutional and inherent limitations. So, ibig sabihin, the scope is, the coverage is unlimited. Ano pa? Supreme. Ibig sabihin, uh, it will, should be or it will be implemented. Maliba na lang kung there is a constitutional or inherent limitation na pwedeng i-apply doon. Okay, nature of tax laws, internal revenue tax law. So, tax laws or inter internal revenue tax laws are what? Not political in nature. It should be not political in nature. They are what? Civil in nature. Not penal in nature. Pag sinabi natin penal, yung for penalties, ayun. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, hindi naman yan iniimpose para uh, magkaroon ng penalty ang bawat mamamayan. Kasi nga, ang penalty iniimpose lang pag nagkaroon ng ano, violation. Okay? Next, construction of tax law. So, tax law should do what? Should receive a reasonable construction with a view of carrying out their purpose and intent. Where the language of the state law is plain and there is no doubt as to the legislative intent, then the words employed shall be given ordinary meanings. Okay? Sabi niya, no person is subject to taxation unless... Within the terms or plain import of the taxing authority. Okay, the power of taxation is the strongest among the inherent power of the states. Why is it the strongest? Because it covers all. It covers the person, it covers the property, and it also covers the right of the person. Okay? Next, application of tax law. In general, tax law are um, prospective in operation. However, this may operate retroactively provided it is expressly declared or it is legislative intent. So, ibig sabihin ganito, parang nangyari yan nung um, nagkaroon ng changes at the, at the middle of the year. So, ang tinatanong nila, paano ba ang application nito? Should it be retroactive? Retrospective, when you say retrospective, you will go back dun sa mga months na nakalipas na. Or is it prospective? Ibig sabihin, the implementation ay dun sa mga months na kasunod. So, sabi dito, in general daw, ang tax law ay prospective in operation. So, ibig sabihin, looking forward. Okay? The, the, next, month ang, the next months ang implementation niya. So, basic principles of a sound tax system, the first one is fiscal adequacy. When we say fiscal adequacy, it means that the sources of revenue as a whole must be adequate to meet the expenditures of the government, regardless of business or economic condition. Sabi dito, the revenue should be elastic or capable of expanding. Kasi nga, di ba, it is a necessity for the government so that it, it can function. Kaya nga dapat, yung makokolekta na revenue should be adequate. When we say adequate, it should be enough to meet the expenditure of the government. The next one is equality or theoretical justice. Ibig sabihin, there should be an equitable or proportionate distribution of tax burden. 
So, hindi pwedeng yung mayayaman lang ang magbabayad ng tax. Sabi nga dito, there should be a proportionate distribution. Ibig sabihin, um, syempre, pag mayaman ka, marami kang income, malaki yung tax mo. Pero syempre, kapag ka naman maliit lang ang income mo, maliit din lang yung tax na babayaran mo. So, the ability to pay... The ability to pay is gauged by the income earned or received by the taxpayer. Kaya nga, ang tax, it will be based on the income that the person received. Sabi dyan, person with greater income must, may, must pay more. Pero dahil meron silang greater ability to pay than those of or with lesser income. The next one is administrative feasibility. It means that tax laws must be capable of reasonable and conven convenient enforcement. Just and effect effective administration. Kasi nga, di ba, sabi nga to, administrative feasibility. So, ibig sabihin, um, kayang ma-impose. Kaya siyang um, mapapasunod ang bawat mga tao na mag-file at magbayad ng kanilang tax. So, ano nga ba ang tax? What is tax? Tax refers to the enforced, enforced, yeah, enforced burden. Ano pa? Mandatory contribution. Yan. So, napakalinaw ano? Enforced. Ibig sabihin sa pilitan. Ibig sabihin, uh, hindi ka pwedeng tumanggi. Because it is mandatory. Okay? By the what? government based on its may basila naman power of taxation upon who or what upon persons properties at saka rights so that is tax ano pa tax is the bread and butter bread and butter or the lifeblood of the government so, no court shall be empowered to interfere with or restrain the collections of taxes. Kaya hindi siya pwedeng ipatigil kahit na nang kung ano pa mang korte. Hindi siya pwedeng ipatigil. Okay, essential characteristics of tax. According to its definition, it is what enforced contribution. The next one, legislative in nature. When we say legislative nga, di ba, it should, um, it should be or it should pass the Congress bago ito ma-implement. Ano pa? It is imposed in accordance with or based on law. Ano pa? It is imposed for what? Public purpose. And also proportionate in character kasi di ba, it is based on the Ability of the person to pay. And then also, it is paid in money or cash. Okay? So, hindi pwedeng goods ang ibabayad, ha? Hindi pwedeng bayad ka ng, ano, pikas. <laughs> Kaya ng, ano, ng goods sa PIR. Ang ibabayad mo ay pera. Oh, it is paid at in regular intervals. Ano pa? It is imposed upon person, property, and rights. Na-mention na natin kanina. And... It is imposed to raise government revenues. So, these are the characteristics of tax. So, what are the classifications of taxes? The first one is according to subject matter. Letter A, personal tax, capitation tax, or poll tax. Ito yung kinatawag natin community tax. So, siguro kayo nakapag, nakapagbayad na rin kayo nito. Okay? Ano bang community tax? Yung cedula. Ayan. Letter B, property tax. Property tax, ang example niyan ay real property tax. Ang property tax, ito yung ini-impose upon the assets or property, real or personal, situated within the territorial, territorial jurisdiction of the state. Okay? Hindi ito ini-impose sa tao, ini-impose ito sa property. The next one, privilege tax or excise tax. So, it refers to those taxes imposed on the taxpayers exercising their rights. Anong example niyan? Donors and estate tax. Okay? Ano ba ang donors tax? Kapag ka nag-donate ka ng property or pera, 
magbabayad ka ng tax. Pag naman namatay ang isang tao at meron siyang estate, ibig sabihin ng estate, meron siyang mga properties na naiwan na ipapamana niya sa kanya, pamilya or mga relatives, kikukuhaan din ng tax yun. O, yan ang example ng privilege tax. Number two, classes of taxes as to scope or authority. Dalawa lang yan. We have the national and the local. So, madali lang. Pag national, it is imposed by the BIR, Bureau of Customs, okay, under the Department of Finance. Ang example niya yung income tax, custom duties, tsaka mga tariff. Pag local tax naman, it is imposed by what? By the local government. Ayan. Example, barangay, cities, municipalities, or provinces. Ang example naman yan, yung real estate tax at saka yung community tax. Number three, classes of tax as to purpose. O, ano, para saan ba ang purpose niyan? General, general tax. O, tax imposed for general purposes. Ibig sabihin, yung proceed nun, pumupunta siya sa national or general fund. Example niyan yung estate tax. Pag specific tax naman, it refers to taxes imposed for a special purpose wherein yung proceeds nun pumupunta sa special fund. Ang example niyan yung gasoline tax. Number four, classes of taxes as to liabilities. We have the direct at saka indirect. Ang pinag-uusapan lang kasi dito ay kung sino yung magbabayad ng tax. Pag direct tax, it is imposed the upon the person directly bound to pay the tax. Okay? So, kung sino yung, kung saan siya ini-impose, siya rin yung magbabayad. Ang example niyan yung income tax, di ba? Ang income tax, it is based on the income of the person. So, siya ang dapat magbayad nun. Pag sinabi kasi natin indirect tax, ito yung mga taxes na pwedeng ipasa. It can be shifted or passed to another person for payment. Ang pinaka-example niyan yung VAT, yung value added tax. Di ba kapag bibili ka ng goods or nag-acquire uh, nag ka ng service, mayroong nakalagay na VAT. Kasi nga yung VAT na yun, shinift sa mga buyer para yung mga buyer ang magbayad ng tax na yun and not the seller. Okay? Number five, classes of taxes as to denomination, <coughs> sorry, as to determination of amount. So, we have a specific tax. When we say specific tax, um, <clears throat> so the amount of tax is based on what? Weight or volume capacity or any physical unit of measurement. Okay? So, magbabayad ka based sa, ano, sa bigat, sa timbang, sa dami, ng item. O, oh, sa physical unit niya. Example niyan, yung tax sa liquor at saka sa cigarettes. Pag sinabi naman natin ad valorem tax, it refers to taxes imposed upon property or, or rights wherein there is what? Uh, the amount are determined based on the sales price or specific values. For example nga niyan is value added tax. Di ba yan ay 12% minumultiplied by the value of the vatable items. Number six, classes of taxes as to graduation or rates. So, tatlo yan. We have the progressive or graduated tax, regressive, and proportionate. Pag sinabi natin progressive, so, taxes imposed, uh, so, the amount of tax increases as the bracket or layer increases. Okay, guess nyo, example nyo yung gift tax. So, pagka tumaas yung amount, tataas din yung, yung tax na i-impose. Pag regressive naman, kabaliktaran. Pag tumaas, tataas daw yung tax kapag nag-decrease naman yung bracket or layer. Okay, or di-decrease naman yung tax kapag nag-increase yung bracket or layer. At the present, wala tayong regressive tax dito sa Pilipinas. Kasi parang ang hirap naman yun. Ibig sabihin, pag tumaas yung income mo, mas konti yung tax na babayaran mo. Tapos pag konti yung income mo, mas mataas yung tax na babayaran mo. Di ba unfair naman? 
The last one is proportionate tax. It refers to taxes imposed upon persons or properties or rights, wherein the amount of tax may be higher or lower depending on the bracket or classification. Okay? So, depende siya. So, kung, kung ang bracket, kunwari, ay, kunwari, yung uh, 250,000 sa ganitong halaga, ganitong tax lang yung babayaran niya. So, may bracket na sinusunod. Those are, that is the proportionate tax. So, dito, ito yung ginagamit natin, proportionate tax, tsaka progressive or graduated tax. Okay, distinction between tax and license fee. Ano bang pinagkaiba nila? <clears throat> Kasi baka makonfuse kayo. So, i-distinct, eh, magkaroon tayo ng distinction sa dalawa. Okay? So, ang tax daw, the purpose is for raising revenue. Pag license fee naman, the purpose is for what? Regulation. So, yun ang difference nila. Pag tax naman, this is the power of taxation, based on the power of taxation. Pag license fee naman, it is based on police power. Okay? Direct authority from Congress levies a tax. Congress levies a tax. Where is, where in... Ang license fee naman, it is under the delegated power to the government, to the local government. Kasi nga, ang nag impose niyan, yung local government, yung LGU natin. The amount of tax is usually big. Yan. Pag tax, malaki ang amount. Pero, pag license fee, usually what? Small lang. Okay. Number five, failure to pay tax does not render the business or occupation illegal. Okay? So, kung hindi ka nakapagbayad ng tax, hindi naman agad i-consider na illegal yung business mo. Pero, pag hindi ka nakapagbayad ng license fee, pwedeng i-consider na illegal ang iyong business or occupation. So, distinct, distinctions between tax and toll. Ano naman pinagkaiba niyo? Okay, ano ba muna ang toll? Ang toll is the compensation charged by the owner for the use of his property or improvements. Diba, na-encounter niyo yan pag pupunta ka ng Manila or Siyudad, meron kang binabayaran na toll fee. Ang laki nga ng toll fee ng iba. Kasi nga, yung mga kalya na yan, kapag ka ang nag-develop niyan ay mga private uh, company o kaya private person, syempre, hihingan niya ng toll yung mga dumadaan dun. Kumbaga, yun yung bayad mo sa pagdaan dun sa kalya na yun. Kasi sila ang nag-improve, sila ang nagpagawa nun. Ayan. Kasi nga, di ba, yung, yung iba, tinutulungan na ang gobyerno. Lalo na kung hindi kaya ng gobyerno na, na ipagawa yung mga infrastructure na yun. Ang nagpapagawa ay mga private company or private person. Pero yun nga, humihingi sila ng toll fee. So, tax represents demand of sovereignty. So, ang nagde-demand yan ay ang ating state, pero ang toll, ang nagde-demand yan ay proprietorship. Ibig sabihin, yung nagmamayari dun sa dinadaanan mong property. Ang government naman, ah, sorry, tax naman is imposed by the government. Okay? Pero, ang toll, pwede rin government ang mag-impose, pwede rin private person. Okay, that is one of the income din ng government. Kung government ang nagpada, nagpagawa nun, pwede rin siya mag-impose ng toll. Pero, mas mura yung toll ng hinihingi ng government kesa sa private person. Number three, taxes imposed to raise revenue. Yan. Ang toll naman is mainly to what? To recover the cost of property and its improvement. Siyempre nga naman nag-invest sila. Yung pagpapagawa nila dun sa... Sa kalya na lang na yun, sa road na yun, uh, malaki, di ba? So, kailangan lang mabawi yung ma-recover yung cost ng property at saka ng improvement. Okay, distinction between tax and special assessment. So, tax is imposed upon, o oh, ulit-ulit na natin to ha? Persons, property, or rights. Pero pag-assessment, oh, magkaroon ng typographical, Special assessment is imposed only on land and its improvement. Okay? Pag sinabi natin special assessment, sa lupa lang yun, tsaka yung improvement. Okay? 
Um, tax ay ini-impose ng national, pwede rin local government. Pero kapag special assessment, local government lang ang nag impose Ang tax ay enforced contribution for the use and support of the government. Pero ang special assessment, it is enforced contribution to recover the cost of public improvements. Next, a tax is ordinary and, general, and of general application. Pero pag special assessment, they are extraordinary and situational as to time and locality. Okay, distinctions between tax and tariff custom duties. So, tax broader ang meaning niya than the tariff and custom duties. Kasi ang custom duties, yun lang ay yun lang ay para sa mga imported or exported goods mula sa ating or papunta sa ating bansa. Okay? At saka yung tariff and custom duties, they are taxes pero hindi lahat ng tariff hindi lahat ng taxes ay tariff and custom duty. So, kumbaga makikita nga natin dito na mas broad ang tax kumpara sa tariff and custom duties. Distinction between tax and debt. Ano ba ang tax? Ang tax syempre ay based on law. Ang debt or utang, it is based on contract. Ang tax is not assignable, pero ang debt, pwede siyang i-assign. Ang tax ay payable in terms of money, pero ang debt, pwedeng money or property. ba? Diba? Kung wala kang pera pang bayad, property ang ibabayad mo. In case of non-payment of tax, except of poll tax, there is a possibility of imprisonment. Pero, when it comes to debt, non-payment of debt, there is no possibility of imprisonment. Like we said earlier, um, non-payment of debt cannot imprison a person. Next one, a tax may be subject to right of, right of offset. A debt is subject, sorry, a tax may not be subject to right of offset. Pero ang debt is subject to right of offset. Parang ganito. Kunwari, last year, mas malaki yung binayaran mong tax kaysa sa dapat na binayaran mo. Okay? So, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin this year na pwede bang yung sobra dun sa binayaran kong tax, si offset na lang sa babayaran ko ngayong taon na tax mo. Hindi pwedeng ganun. Okay? Because walang right of offset ang tax. Okay, next is the tax situs or place of taxation. Paano ba natin malalaman yung situs? When you say situs, that is place ng taxation. So, it refers to what? Territorial jurisdiction of the government. Kasi diba that is the question? Pwede ba natin, pwede bang mag-impose ng tax dyan? Okay. So, sabi nga natin, diba, the, in, the inherent limitation is that the government can only impose tax within its territorial jurisdiction. So, it it literally means, yung C2, uh, place of taxation. So, what is the basic rule? Sabi nga dyan, the state where the subject to be taxed has a C2 may rightfully divide or collect the tax. So, pag mayroon siyang territorial jurisdiction, pwede siyang kumuha ng tax. So, the situs is necessarily in the state which has jurisdiction or which exercises dominion over the subject or subject in question. So, ibig sabihin, yung tao may be subject to taxation in several taxing jurisdictions. So, the place or situs of taxation depends on the following factors. Domicile or residence. Pag sinabi natin domicile or residence, ito ay kung saan nakatira yung tao. Citizenship or nationality of the person. Diba? So, pwede kasi hindi ba nakatira siya sa Pilipinas, pero hindi naman siya citizen ng Philippines. And another one, location or source of income. 
property or right. Doon muna tayo sa person. Pag daw tao ang tinatax, pag person, okay, poll tax may be properly levied upon person who are inhabits, inhabitants or residents of the state. Whether citizen or not. So, ibig sabihin, pag poll tax, kahit na hindi ka citizen, pero kung residente ka doon sa lugar na yun, it can be imposed against you. Okay? Pag real property naman, ano nga ang real property? These are land, building. With respect to real property, real estate is subject to taxation in the state which wherein the property is located. Kahit na resident or non-resident yung uh, owner ng property, kung saan nakalocate ang property, doon siya, yun ang kanyang situs. Okay? Next is tangible personal property. Ang example nito, it has a physical, physical, ano, physical form. Can be touched. Personal property. For example, nito yung mga jewelry, yung ganyan. So, the modern rule is that a tangible personal property is, tax, is taxable in the state where it has the actual C2. So, ibig sabihin, kung saan actually located yung property or physically located yung property, yun yung may karapatang mag-tax dun sa property. Kahit na yung owner niya ay nasa another jurisdiction. For example, yung tangible personal property ay nandito sa Pilipinas, pero yung owner niya ay nagre-reside sa ibang bansa. So, ang Pilipinas, pwede niya pa rin, pwede pa rin siyang mag-impose ng tax doon sa personal property na yun because it is located in the Philippines. Okay? The other one is the intangible personal property. When we say intangible personal property, these are the cash, money, credit, bills, receivables, bank deposits. Yeah. So, as a general rule, saan daw siya dapat? Okay? The general rule is that the situs for purposes of property taxation is, the, is at the domicile of the owner. So, hindi siya sa actual location ng uh, intangible personal property but at the domicile of the owner. Ano ibig sabihin nga ng domicile? The residence of the owner. Kung saan nakatira yung owner. So kahit na nasa ibang bansa, kunwari meron siyang pera, bank deposits sa Amerika, pero ang, ang domicile niya ay sa Philippines. Philippines ang mag impose ng tax doon sa intangible properties na yun. Okay? Next is the income. Income tax may be properly exacted from persons who are residents or citizens in the taxing jurisdiction. From those who are neither residents nor citizens provided that the income is derived from sources within the taxing states. So, ito, pag sinabi natin income, pwede yung hingan kahit na ikaw ay resident or citizen or non-resident or not citizen, basta nagkaroon ka ng income within the state, tax will be imposed. And then, business occupation and transaction. So, what is the CPUS? As a general rule, it is upon the place where the business is done. Okay, so kahit na hindi, okay, kahit foreign corporation yung may-ari ng negosyo, pero yung negosyo ay nandito sa Pilipinas, may karapatan ang Pilipinas na mag-impose ng tax dun sa negosyo na yun. Because the place is where the business is done. Ano pa? The occupation is engaged. Okay? So, kahit na kunwari foreigner, um, mag stay lang siya dito ng, kasi consultant siya, mag stay lang siya ng 3 months. Pero dahil na yung occupation niya ay in-engage niya dito sa Philippines, pwede siyang hinga na tax. And where the transaction took place. <clears throat> Kung saan nag- Nagkaroon ng transaction kung dito sa Pilipinas, so may karapatan ang Philippines na mag-impose ng tax. The next one is gratuitous transfer of property. When we say gratuitous, 
you are not expecting anything in return or you, there is no or uh, you are transmitting a property without consideration. Ang example niyan ay donation. Okay? So, paano pag nag-donate ka? Sabi dyan, it is in the state where the transfer is a citizen or resident or where the property is located. So, malalaman natin kung sino ang pwedeng mag, kung anong bansa ang pwedeng mag-tax. Una, kung saan citizen or nakatira yung nag-transfer, yung nag-donate. Or, pwede rin naman kung saan property nakalocate yung dinonate. Ay, kung saan estate nakalocate yung property na dinonate. Okay, next phases or aspects of taxation. The first one is levying or imposition of tax. Ito na nga yung tinatawag natin na legislative process to determine kung ano ba ang specific person, property, or class transaction na itatax. Assessment and collection of tax. So, once the tax law is levied, dito na, assessment na, i-collect na yung tax. Kumbaga, uh, implementation na. International Committee, I mentioned it earlier. So, ito nga yung, di ba, yung um, pwedeng magkaroon ng ng non-imposition of taxation dun sa property wherein yung foreign government naman ay mayroong pag-aari nun. Pag so, categories of double taxation, we have, pag sinabi natin double taxation, uh, same taxpayer, same person, same property or right, twice siya na na tax ng same kind and character of tax. Okay? Ng same authority within the jurisdiction for the same purpose. Kaya nga siya tinawag na double taxation. There are two types of double taxation. The first one is the direct double taxation. <coughs> and the other one is the indirect double taxation. Pag sinabi natin direct double taxation, Direct act of taxing the same person. Ibig sabihin, directly nangyari yung double taxation. Okay? So, napaka-simple lang actually. Nandun na rin mismo sa term niya. Pag sinabing direct, directly na-impose ang double taxation. Pag indirect, na-impose siya other than direct double taxation. So, there is no constitutional limitation on double taxation. It is merely... Uh, Subject to inherent limitation. So, wala, hindi, hindi siya constitutional limitation, di ba? So, kung natatandaan ninyo, under siya ng inherent limitation. So, classification of tax escapes. So, pwede pa lang makataka sa tax. Ano yun? Una, through tax credit. Ang tax credit kasi ay ito. Kapag ka nagkaroon ng payment that is uh, above of what, of what should have been paid kasi nga na withhold ng withholding agents o kaya it is expressly allowed by law as deduction directly dun sa basic taxes due ayan, so pwede yung enjoy ng taxpayer yung tax credit na yan another one is tax exemption so meron tayong mga itinatawag na tax exemption ito yung mga property right or transaction na hindi magi impose there is a, an immunity whether express or implied immunity on the imposition of tax ay example niya na express or affirmative tax exemption okay wherein these provisions are um, under or cited by the constitution statute treaty ordinances or franchise another one by omission or implied tax exemption. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya napasama dun sa list na dapat ma ma magbayad ng tax na yon, So, omission siya. Or, sinabi mismo dun sa batas na yung particular class na yon ay exempted doon sa tax na yon. 
tax evasion or tax dodging. Ito yung illegal. No. Kasi pag tax evasion, dinadaya mo ang iyong assessment. Nilelesen mo yung tax liability mo or uh, tax payment mo by using pretenses or forbidden devices. So, it is an illegal means of redu reducing and avoiding tax. And it is what? Prohibited and punishable by law. Another one is tax avoidance. Pag tax avoidance naman, it is the act of using legitimate or lawful means permitted by our tax law in order to minimize the tax. So, yung mga tax expert, ito yung kanilang mga nire-recommend sa kanilang mga kliyente kung paano maa-avoid yung tax. The other one is tax shifting. So, ito naman yung legitimate na pagpapasa ng tax liability from one person to another person. Example nga nito ay yung VAT. Okay, sources of national tax law. Siyempre, ang una dyan is the National Internal Revenue Code of the Philippines. The next ay yung BIR rulings. Philippine Special Law. Decisions of the Philippine Courts. Opinions and rulings of the Secretary of Justice, Philippine Constitution, and the Presidential Decrees. So, ito yung mga sources national tax law. So, BIR organizations, powers, and functions. Kilalani naman natin ngayon ang BIR. Ano ba ang BIR? So, it is the government agency that is authorized and tasked to administer and execute internal revenue law and regulation. Ano? So, maraming allergic dito na businessman sa BIR. Kasi bakit? Sila ang nag impose ng tax. Sila ang nagre-regulate ng revenue law. Okay, BIR is imbued with its mission to render services to the public with justice and honor at all times. Okay, ang BIR daw ay organizationally apart and under the supervision and control of what? Ayan no, Department of Finance. Okay, ito ang nakakasakop sa BIR. Primary officials of the BIR, we have the Chief Commissioner. Chief Commissioner, we have the four Deputy Commissioner. We have the Revenue Regional Directors, Assistant Revenue Regional Directors, Revenue District Officer, Department Heads of the Assessment and Collection, and other BIR officials. So, yun yung mga primary officials ng BIR. So, the BIR consists of the central office and the regional office. Pag sinabi natin central office, it is confined on national policy formulation, proper planning. So, mostly sa mga planning talaga sila, sa mga uh, revenue laws and rules, at saka general direction and control of the entire revenue, internal revenue service. Okay. And then it is divided into various revenue district offices. Okay, so each region office is headed by a revenue regional director. Yan. So the Bureau of Internal Revenue is divided into two working groups. We have the assessment ayan, and collection group. So sila yung in charge sa pag-assess at pangolekta ng mga tax. And the other one is the legal and administrative group. So, pag may na-encounter ng mga legal matters at nag administer ng the entire revenue service, ito naman yun. So, BIR powers and authorities, ano ba ang una? Siyempre, ang pinakauna dyan ay assessment and collection of tax. Ano pa? Enforcement of all for features, penalties, and fines. Kapag kasi hindi ka nakabayad ng tax sa tamang oras at sa tamang lugar, mayroon kang penalty. Ano pa? Execution of judgments in all cases. So, kapag ka nagkaroon ng kaso, tapos uh, sinabi na magkakaroon ng surcharge or penalty at interest, sila ang nag implement Effect and administer the supervisor and police power conferred to it by laws. Ayan. So, BIR commissioners powers and authorities. Ano naman ang power ng BIR Commissioner. Una, siya ang mag interpret ng tax law at siya ang mag decide ng mga tax cases. Ano pa? Obtain information, summons, examine, administer, opt, and take testimony of person. Siya rin yung nag assess at nag-prescribe ng additional requirement for the tax administration and enforcement. 
and nagde-dedicate din siya ng kanyang powers. Powers, be a powers that cannot be delegated. Ano ba yung hindi pwedeng i-delegate? So, una dyan is the power to recommend the promulgation of rules and regulation by the finance secretary, the power to issue rulings of first impression, the power to compromise or abate any tax liability, and the power to assign or reassign internal revenue officers to establishments. Okay, the next one, commissioners' power to make assessment additional requirements and tax uh, enforcement. The first one is examination of tax returns and termination of tax, tax due. Ayan, so tinag sila yun ang nag examine yan kung tama ba yung tax due na na-compute. And then, ano pa, assess the proper tax on the best evidence obtainable. On taxpayers, failure to submit required tax return. Kung wala hindi siya nakapagpasa ng tax return, wala rin siyang statements, wala rin siyang reports. So, sila na yung mag assess nun. Ano pa, sila din yung magkakandak ng inventory taking, surveillance. Okay, ng ano, gross sales and receipts. Kaya nga, di ba, pinapatabi nila yung mga official receipts kasi doon nila binabase yun kung magkano yung income ng taxpayer. Ano pa? Terminate taxable period, prescribe real property values. Di ba? Yung lupa, sila rin na nagpe-prescribe kung ano ba yung value nun. Inquire into bank deposit accounts. For example, gusto nilang mag-investiga, pwede nilang tanungin yung bank deposit account mo. Ano pa? A credit and register tax agents. Yan. Prescribe additional procedural and documentary requirements. Yan yung kanilang mga powers. Okay, next. Com commissioner's power to compromise a big taxes, refunds, and tax credit. So, meron tayong tinatawag na compromise settlement program. Kasi nga, di ba, for example, hindi ka nakapagbayad ng tax tapos masyado ng malaki yung tax liability, pwedeng magkaroon ng compromise settlement. Pwede siyang installment. Yan. Pwede kayo magkaroon ng kasunduan na babayaran mo na lang siya by installment. Person who can avail the compromise uh, settlement program. Sino yun? Yung may mga ano, delinquent accounts. Kung sinabi natin delinquent accounts, hindi na nakapagbayad ng kanilang taxes. Cases under D, ito. Revenue office, revenue district office, ayan. Ano pa? Civil tax case dis disputed by the courts. Collection case filed in the court and criminal violations except those already filed in the court or involving tax fraud. So, ibig sabihin, pagka may tax fraud ka, hindi ka pwedeng mag-avail ng compromise settlement program. Cases not, not covered by the compromise settlement program. Ang example nito, withholding tax cases. Ang withholding tax cases kasi, ito yung mga taxes na wini-withhold na agad sa, or inaalis na, kinakaltas na kaagad sa income mo. Ano pa, criminal tax fraud cases, criminal violations, delinquent accounts. So, grounds for basis of compromise. So, there is a reasonable doubt as to the validity of the tax claim against the uh, taxpayer. Sabi dyan, ang penalty daw is equal to at least 40%. Bakit? Parang may duda. Hindi talaga sigurado. Ano pa? Financial incapacity of the taxpayer. Ayan. Di ba? Paano mo pipilitin kung hindi naman na kaya magbayad? The compromise penalty is equal to at least 10%. 10% na. Kasi wala naman daw kaya ng magbayad. Okay, grounds or basis for tax abatement. So, unjust or excessive assessment of tax claim or due, administrative and collection costs do not justify the collection of tax claim or due. Grounds for basis of tax refund. Ito, pwede kang magano ng tax refund or tax credit kapag yung taxes mo daw ay erroneously or illegally received or penalty or paid without authority. Ibig sabihin, pinagpayad ka ng BIR na illegal naman. Ano? Another one. Taxpayer files in writing within two years after the payment of taxes or penalty CKS. So, BIR, BIR commissioners due to sanfunction. 
So, ano ba ang duties and function niya? Una, to ensure the provision and distribution of PIR forms. Okay? Divide the country to such required number of revenue districts. Make arrest and seizure for violation of penal law in the tax code. Make assignment of internal revenue officers. So, siya ang nag assign ng mga uh, BIR officer. Make assignment of internal revenue officer and other employees to their duties. And submission of the commissioner's annual report to other and other pertinent information. So, ano ba ang jurisdiction ng BIR? Ito, halos lahat. The individual income tax, corporate income tax, estate tax, donor's tax, percentage tax, value-added tax, excise tax, and documentary stamp tax. So, napansin ninyo ang daming tax natin sa Pilipinas. Actually, hindi lang naman sa Pilipinas, kahit sa ibang bansa. Maraming klase ng tax. Sabi nga, kada kilos mo may tax. So, such other taxes are thereafter may be imposed or collected by the BIR. Now is the discussion for penalties and additions to taxes. So, kailan ba nagkakaroon ng penalty or addition sa taxes na kailangang bayaran ng isang taxpayer? So, it happens when there is a failure to file income tax return. So, hindi siya nag-file ng income tax return niya for the year. Or, if such was filed... After the prescribed due date, so ibig sabihin late siya nag-file. Or ano pa, the amount shown by the taxpayer as income tax or on income tax return or part of such amount was ano, not paid on or before the date prescribed for its payment. So, hindi lang yung filing, pwede rin na late yung payment ng tax. Or... Pwede rin naman there is an underpayment of the quarterly or final adjustment income tax. Okay, so yun yung mga yun na una, hindi nakapag-file ng, ng income tax or nakapag-file man pero late. Pwede rin uh, hindi nakapagbayad o nakapagbayad man pero late. Or nagbayad nga pero underpayment naman ang nangyari. So ano ang pwede nga i-add dyan? Ano ang mangyayari? What is the consequence? The first is uh, the surcharge of 25%. Yan na. So, may surcharge agad ng 25%. Malaki yan na. Malaki. So, ibig sabihin, if 100,000 yung amount, 25,000 ka agad yan. Okay. So, there shall be imposed additional tax required to be paid. A penalty on the following cases. First one. Ah, ito na yung mga inanin natin, discuss natin kanina. Failure to file tax return. Okay, those whom ang nangyari ay mali yung na-file na. Nag-file nga, on time nga, pero mali naman kung saan na-file. Ano pa? Failure to pay the deficiency and de delinquency tax. And also... Um, failure to pay full or part the amount of tax that is shown in the tax return. Surcharge of 50%. Wow, malaki. 50% ang magiging surcharge kapag ano? Ito. There is a willful neglect to file tax return. Hindi talaga siya nag-file ng tax return. Sadya. Willful neglect. And 
false and fraudulent tax return is willfully made. So, ibig sabihin, um, nagkaroon talaga ng tax evasion. So, ang magiging surcharge niyan ay 50%. Okay? Provided that a substantial under-declaration of the taxable sales receipts and overstatement of deduction shall constitute a prima facie evidence. So, there should be an evidence, syempre, that there is a false or fraudulent tax return. Provided further that the failure to report sales or receipts amount to what? Exceeding 30% of that what should be declared. Ibig sabihin, um, nag-exceed ng 30% yung amount nung hindi na-report as sales or receipts or under declaration ng income. Ayan. Interest of 20 12% per annum. So, bukod sa surcharge, may interest pa yan. So, ibig sabihin, kung na-late ka ng payment, kung gaano number of days na na-late ka, mag i pa yan ng 12% bukod dun sa surcharge mo. Okay? And then, delinquency interest. Ang delinquency interest ay 12% din. Okay, 12% din siya. In case of failure to pay any of this, ito, the amount of tax due on any tax return required to be filed, the amount of tax due for no tax return is required in a deficiency tax. So, pagkakaroon ka ng delinquency interest dyan. And then, letter D, interest on extended payment. So, ito ang nangyari. Uh, there shall be assessed and collected 12% interest at the rate therein. Bakit? Nagkaroon ka ng unpaid part of the uh, income tax return or the tax na dapat mong bayaran ay hindi pa nababayaran. Okay? From the date of notice and the demand until it is paid. So, ibig sabihin, from the date na dapat mong binayaran yon, binigay yung demand na dapat bayaran, hanggang sa date na talagang nakabayad. Kasi, di ba, there are, there are cases wherein wala pang pangbayad yung taxpayer. So, ang mangyayari niyan, tatakbo dyan yung 12% interest every day. Pero, per anum naman yung 12% interest. Ito yung mga cases niyan. If any person required to pay the tax is qualified or elects to pay on ano installment. Kaya lang, hindi niya nabayaran yung any installment thereof. Okay? At ano pa, where the BIR commissioner has authorized the taxpayer extension of time to pay the deficiency tax, pero hindi siya nakapagbayad ng tax within the prescribed extension period. Okay. So, the general provisions. So, the addition to basic tax, meron tayo, delinquent tax or deficiency tax, shall apply to all taxes, fees, and charges imposed by the NIRC. Okay? And then also, the added tax shall be collected at the same time in the manner as part of the tax. So, ibig sabihin, madadagdagan yung babayaran mo na tax because of this. Ngayon, if withholding tax agent naman is the government or its agencies, ang mangyayari dyan, the employee is responsible for the withholding and remittance of the income tax shall be the person, shall be personally liable for the additions of income tax prescribed. Sinabi natin person, it includes what? Officer or employee of a corporation or partnership wherein such person ay may duty na, ano, is under the duty to perform the act in respect to which the violation occurs. And then, income tax return filed and taxes paid within the prescribed filing payment period is presumed to be filed and paid as of the day of the said of filing period. So, here are the formulas in determination of the additions, penalties to the basic tax. So, in the Formula 1, may delinquency, may delinquency tax but ito ha, without willful neglect or fraud. So, ibig sabihin hindi siya sinadya. Walang fraud na nangyari. Dito ang delinquency tax niya is 50,000 kasi 150,000 yung dapat bayaran, ang nabayaran niya 100,000 lang. So, ang mangyayari dyan, ito malito, it should be 25% surcharge. So, 50,000 times 25%, so that is 12,500. 
plus the 12% interest on the delinqu delinquent tax, which is 50,000 times 12% times yung 3 months, yun yung duration na hindi niya agad nabayaran yung delinquency tax niya, divided by 12%. Kasi nga sabi nga natin, yung 12%, it is the annual rate. So, 12,500 plus 1,500 is 14,000. So, ang total na babayaran niya na ay 64,000. Okay? The assumption here is that the unpaid, yun nga, unpaid period is 3 months. And there is no willful neglect or fraud. Pero pag nagkaroon ng willful neglect or fraud, instead na 25%, ilan? Ilang percent? It should be 50%. Formula number two, with deficiency tax but without willful neglect or fraud. Correct tax due, dapat 250,000. Ang payment niya ay 150,000 lang. So, there is a deficiency tax of magkano? 100,000 yung deficiency niya. So, ang mangyayari dyan, meron siyang surcharge na 25%, so that's 25,000, and interest of 12%, so that's 9,000, so the total is 34,000. So, ang total assessed niya na na amount is 134,000. Yan na yung babayaran niya. So, kagaya din sa Formula 1, kapag merong willful neglect or fraud, the surcharge shall be... 50%. Okay? So, that is the sample uh, formula. So, if any of you has question regarding my discussion in this module, you may uh, ask me during our online session to be scheduled. Ano? So, itanong nyo na lang for clarification. Okay. So, that's all. That is my lecture for the module 1 which is the introduction to uh, taxation.